George Galloway, and the mother of all talk shows. Join us at the College of Knowledge, where there are no tuition fees. Who are you going to believe, me or the evidence of your lying eyes, as uh, one of the Marx brothers, I forget which, once said. And that's the problem, too, with the 9-11 narrative, as it is with the JFK narrative. Once upon a time, nearly everybody believed the official narrative on JFK. Now hardly anybody believes it. Once upon a time, although only briefly, the great majority of people believed the official narrative about 9-11, but that is no longer the case. More and more people are questioning it, including me. And that's both because of the powerful arguments made uh, by the likes of my next guest this evening, uh, but also because I discover that the people that want me to believe their official narrative are caught out as liars over and over and over again. Once bitten, twice shy, you know. Now, Richard Gage is a South, uh, San Francisco Bay Area architect. He's a member of the American Institute of Architects, and he's the founder and former chief executive of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. That's all we want, isn't it, Richard? The truth. <laughs> yeah, we're just looking for the truth, George. That's right. And I've been at it for 15 years after creating Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, which now has 3,500 architects and engineers signed onto the petition demanding a new investigation into the destruction of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. Summarize the prevailing view uh, amongst your 3,500. What is it that they doubt and why do they doubt it? Well, I think, George, it starts with World Trade Center Building 7. I mean, this is a 47-story skyscraper that on the afternoon of 9-11, after witnesses hear explosions, suddenly drops straight down uniformly, symmetrically, into its own footprint in under seven seconds. This is free-fall acceleration. That's as fast as a bowling ball falling out of the sky. That means, and these architects and engineers know this, that all 80 columns had to have been removed at once in order for it to fall without any resistance from any one of them. That's always been the most puzzling aspect. One could talk about the Pentagon, uh, the weirdness of, of, of the story about the Pentagon building, but Building 7 is on the face of it inexplicable, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is absolutely inexplicable because we have, it's the official story, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, you know, eight years later, seven years later, came out with a report. And in the report, they said, well, it came out, it came down due to normal office fires. Well, office fires have never brought down a steel frame fireproof skyscraper in history ever. It just doesn't happen. And yet on 9-11, we have not two, but three protected, uh, fire protected steel frame buildings falling out of the sky. This should be the most studied building failure in history. Remember, no plane hit this building. And most architects and engineers don't even know about the third worst structural failure in modern history. Uh, this is an, a completely unprecedented event. It, sh it should be news throughout the world, and yet it was swept under the rug by our mainstream media and by the associations of professional engineers and architects. I'm a member of the American Institute of Architects. They have 90,000 members. Uh, we didn't receive one bulletin on this incredible uh, fail structural failure, and yet we, the architects, are the ones who specify the fireproofing for these buildings. And they were fireproofed, um, uh, all of them, including Building 7, which 
which, which wasn't hit by a plane in the Twin Towers. They say that the fireproofing was knocked off by the plane. That's the key point. Uh, we'll turn to the Twin Towers uh, in a minute, but let me launch this poll, uh, Richard. The poll is simple. Do you believe the official 9-11 account? A, yes. B, no. You can vote on my Twitter account, on my YouTube channel, and on my uh, Telegram uh, channel. But that's the key point. Uh, Building 7 was not struck by an aeroplane. So how could it fall like a pa flat as a pancake in its own footprint uh, from quote-unquote normal office fires? Um, and uh, if the story about Building 7 is less than the truth, perhaps even flatly untrue, that of course, in a knock-on effect, calls into question uh, the official narrative of the Twin Towers themselves, doesn't it? Necessarily it does. And when we look at the forensic evidence in the aftermath of all three buildings, we find the evidence of ignited and unignited incendiaries. Now, most of this is provided from official sources, uh, like, for instance, OSHA and, and FEMA themselves, which document extreme temperatures way beyond what jet fuel or office fires can produce. Those are about 500 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, double that. Uh, well, excuse me, uh, cut that in half for, for Celsius. Um, but what we have uh, is the documentation of 2,800 degrees uh, Celsius, excuse me, Fahrenheit, which is about 1,500 Celsius, the, and, in the, and in the forms of molten iron, molten steel, again and again. The, the structural engineers, the World Trade Center structural engineer himself, Leslie Robertson, talking about a river of steel flowing. This, this is, and, and this is documentation of, of uh, the effects of thermite, as FEMA does in their Appendix C in 2002, which they have a metallurgical examination in the Appendix C, which documents hot sulfur corrosion attack on the steel a liquid molten iron invading the grain boundaries of the steel hot sulfur where does the sulfur come from where does the molten iron come from well that's the byproduct of thermate thermate is an incendiary used by the military to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter and jonathan barnett says the ends of the beams were partly evaporated he's the author of a substantial portion of the final report on the on the uh, FEMA the FEMA uh, report, but NIST came in in 2002, took over the investigation, threw out the metallurgical report, threw out the evidence of explosions at all three towers by hundreds of witnesses, particularly in the case of the twin towers, explosions. Uh, they say running under like a train running under my feet, explosions like pop pop pop. They say like you know when a when, a, when there's a controlled demolition, uh, that's what I heard all around the face of all four buildings. This is incredible. Uh, this is direct evidence, 156 of them, uh, orally, orally recorded a month after 9-11, uh, produced and documented uh, and, and published by the New York Times. Uh, the transcripts, they're absolutely haunting with the overwhelming majority of them, along with newscasters that day on the day of 9-11, talking about this being an explosion-based event. This is very well documented by Professor Graham McQueen uh, and produced by Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, but then the next day, the narrative changed when the mainstream media came in and they call it uh, the, the steel weakened due to um, the incredible heat from the jet fuel fires. Well, jet fuel doesn't burn any hotter than 300 degrees Celsius, uh, according to its own manufacturer, ME Petroleum, in open air. So we, we, it, the official story can't possibly account for the incredible temperatures, but nor can it account for what the U.S. Geological Survey and R.J. Lee, an independent uh, uh, firm, 
uh, environmental consulting firm, they do studies on the dust, and what do they find? Well, about 6% of the dust samples in many of them, uh, and all of the dust samples have this characteristic uh, feature of previously molten iron microspheres. That's the documentation uh, of a clear um, uh, evidence of the use of thermite. Thermite produces molten iron and in microspheres if there's an explosive pressure wave. Um, and so these are almost small to the naked eye. And the, and the, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, says these, this is characteristic of the dust. It's, it, it's what creates unique, uniquely the identification of the World Trade Center dust from common office building dust. And yet none of them know where these could have came from. But you do a controlled experiment well, uh, and you find yeah. what? <clears throat> I, know, I know that you don't go into uh, who might have done this. People will uh, speculate and even draw their own conclusions uh, about that. Could have been the terrorists. Could have been somebody else. But that the official story doesn't add up in architectural and engineering terms is uh, pretty powerful, I've got to say. Uh, I've spoken to you before about it. Uh, you helped to change my mind, and you are continuing to do so. I don't go all the way with you, but uh, you are raising <laughs> questions that are so profound as to be, never mind scientifically, but politically, extremely important. It's a bit like, um, you know, when I was a kid, I was a very, very ardent uh, lover of uh, Jack Kennedy. Uh, I grew up believing the story that a lone gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald, had killed him with incredible marksmanship from a window in a high building beside him until we saw the Zapruder film, which clearly shows Kennedy also being shot from the front, after which you can't unsee that. And the, uh, the official narrative effectively begins to unravel. Then you ask the question, why did they insist on that official narrative when so much evidence exists that contradicts it? Do you feel you're getting anywhere uh, on that in the way that Kennedy theorists have gotten? Yeah, I think one of the Zapruder films of the 9-11 movement is the peer-reviewed uh, study in the Bentham Open Chemical Physics Journal, for instance, by a team of eight international scientists led by Niels Herod in Copenhagen, which finds <coughs> a curious red-gray chips in all the dust samples uh, that they collected. Uh, they're, they're fluid applied because they're dual-layered. They have the ingredients because they are attracted to a magnet. They, they're, they're, they're full of iron. Uh, and so they do a, a, a nuclear microscope test and they find at 50,000 uh, power uh, magnification the ingredients of thermite, uh, iron oxide and aluminum powder. Uh, this is an incredible finding in 2009 that's been unchallenged by the official narrative or by debunkers. They say, oh, that's just paint, but paint doesn't have the exotic properties that does what? That in a big heater, a differential scanning calorimeter, it, it, it ignites and produces what? It produces iron, molten iron microspheres with the same chemical signature as the molten iron microspheres found by the USGS and RJ Lee. So this is a self-corroborating set of repeatable experimental data that could put a lot of people away for mass murder and treason. And there's no statute of limitations. And that's why in the UK right now, we have uh, a, a brave uh, family member uh, Matt Campbell, who has submitted a petition, an inquest into the death of his brother who was murdered in the North Tower. And this has gone to the Attorney General uh, in the UK, and uh, it's it's got preliminary stages of approval for a re-inquest into his, not only his death, but the death of, of uh, many others. There, there's 1,100 people for whom we have no trace of in the World Trade Center towers. That is not a progressive collapse, as they have told us. 
Uh, this is a very explosive event where 90% of the steel uh, comprising a third of the weight of this building is distributed laterally at 600 feet in every direction at 80 miles an hour. And the concrete, 90,000 tons of concrete pulverized into into powder, like baby powder, distributed uh, in a three square mile area about Manhattan. Well, that's two thirds of the weight of the building. It's not available to crush the building. What you see in the photos is not the top part crushing the bottom part. Uh, what you see is an incredibly explosive event. And we document that in our uh, video free on YouTube, 9-11 explosive evidence experts speak out. And it's on the website, richardgage911.org. Thank you, Richard. Uh, a pleasure talking to you again, definitely. Not so much food for thought as a banquet uh, for thought, Richard Gage of architects for, and engineers for 9-11 uh, Truth. Uh, now, uh, we'll go to uh, calls, uh, but let me tell you again about the poll. Do you believe the official 9-11 account? Yes, 19% on Twitter. No, 81%. On YouTube, yes, 9%. No, 91%. And on Telegram, yes, 6%. No, 94%. Uh, 